Welcome. Now that you understand the time value of money, let's put your knowledge to the test and tackle two ACCA exam questions together. I have the first one on my screen. Let's read it together. I'll give you a hint, then you try it on your own and we can compare our answers. We have an investor who invested an unknown sum of money for three years. Number of years, very critical when we're working with the time value of money at a compound interest rate of 2% per year. After three years, the sum of money was worth $541.22. Now here's our question. What was the dollar amount invested. I'll give you one hint. Let's lay out a table like we did before. And we've got three year time horizon. So we need four columns. That would be a column for now, a column for year one, a column for year two, and then a column for year three. That is my hint. Pause the video. See if you can get it. Welcome back. So important to understand they want the amount invested. Guys, that would be the amount now, today. At the end of the third year, the investment will be worth or was worth, we're looking back in time, 541.22. So we've got to work backward and get the original investment. So the concept here is the future value or so we need to apply the principle of discounting and we need to get the present value of the 54122 when it's been compounded three times. Now, the easy way to do this is to put 1.02 in our calculator, right? That's one plus 2%. So if you remember, compounding means we multiply by 1.02 three times. So a quick way to arrive at the correct answer is just to divide by 1.02 three times. So if I do that in my calculator, so if I enter 541.22 in my calculator and then I divide by 1.02, I divide the result again by that number, and I divide that second result again, I get 510. So that is the correct answer. So that is the correct answer. Another way to do it, 541, Point twenty two multiplied by one over one point zero two to the power of three okay, is equal to the present value. So if we solve for x, we will arrive at the same number. So we can take the five four one point twenty two and then multiply by 0 0.9423. That's also known as the discount factor, but you'll learn about that in more detail as you continue your ACCA studies. And the product of that will be the 510, maybe a little bit of change, but the answer is rounded off to the nearest dollar. 
Let's move on to our second question. This one is more challenging, and I'm going to use the spreadsheet here to help me out with the math. And let's read. A company has decided to lease a machine. Rather than purchase the machine outright, they went to a leasing company, and they will pay five yearly installments for the use, the right to use that machine. In essence, they are renting the machine for five years. And it looks like they're paying at the end of the year because the first rental payment is required in one year. And they tell us that the interest rate is 4%. That describes the opportunity cost of this decision maker. If he wasn't renting the machine, those $7,000 would be earning interest in the bank. And we don't want the future value, but we want the present value of the lease payments. So we now have a more complicated calculation to perform. Let me give you another hint and then you see if you can get it, then we'll do it together. This time we have five years, so we have now to express the beginning of the current year. Column one, let's use that same uh, terminology, year one, the end of year one, year two, end of year two, year three, the end of year three, year four, end of year four, and so on. Now, I can make a column for the cash flow. And it's going to be five equal payments of $7,000 at the end of each year. So the challenge we are presented with is to get the net present value, not the individual present value of each column, but we're going to sum those present values together to get a net present value. And if we can do a quick review, if we were compounding we could compound the interest rate the interest rate could be expressed as 1.04, that's 4%. Now, I can multiply that by 1.04. That would express two years of compounding. We have it in the bank for one year and then a second year. And I can now drag this formula across so let's call that a compounding index. But guys, compounding is for the future value. We want the present value. So now we can do a discount factor off of that. And if you remember, we need to divide by this. So that's going to be equal to 1 over that compounding index. And those numbers are getting, getting pretty busy. Let's round all of this off to three decimal places. I think that will be enough for our purposes. So friends, that's my hint for you. See if you can get the present value or the net present value of these five lease payments. Pause the video, give it a try. Welcome back. I'm gonna use the spreadsheet to help me out. I'm gonna make a new row. I'm gonna call that row the discounted CF for cash flow. What I'm going to do, look at this. For year one, 
x multiplied by 1.04 is equal to 7,000. So I'm going to work backwards. I'm essentially dividing 7,000 by, by, by this number or multiplying it by this. So we can work backwards like this, or we can go 7,000 multiplied by 1 over 1.04 equals x. So for my discounted cash flow row, we can take 7,000 and we can divide by this and we get a 6730 or we could achieve the same thing if we multiply it by the discount factor. We can do it either way. And if I drag this across, I will be replicating the work. Let me now round this off. We can round this to the nearest one. And we have the present value of the $7,000 in each year. Now notice this. Notice that the number is getting smaller. And that's a sanity check that we have applied, applied the correct principle. In other words, $7,000 in year five is only worth 5,753 to me today because I would be earning interest if I wasn't paying for this machine. So the answer then, the net present value of those lease payments will be equal to the sum of the five individual present values, and we get 31163. Now, if you're wondering what is this annuity factor business, well, the word annuity describes a constant cash flow over a fixed period of time. So we have $7,000 recurring five years in a row. So look at this nice trick. If we do a total of those individual discount factors, that gives me 4, 0.452. So a very nice shortcut I could take if I'm presented with these annuity factors, I can go $7,000 multiplied by that figure equals this one multiplied by this one and there's that number once again. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. A deep dive into discount rates, present value, and net present value. We're using the concept of time value of money to understand what is the value in today's terms of these five future $7,000 payments. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap on our video looking at time value of money type ACCA questions.